So how exactly do you get mobile service for your phone in Colombia? Hi all, I'm Ezrado and you're watching my travel channel where I talk all things Colombia. So today I wanted to talk about a topic I haven't seen a great deal of info on, or at least not all in one place, and that is how you go about getting data, text, and calls for your phone while you're not using Wi-Fi in Colombia. Now this is actually a little more complex than you might think, if you don't know what you're doing at least, so hopefully I can streamline this for you by outlining everything you need to do to get a Colombian SIM card that will work for as long as you're there. Speaking of which, the first thing you need to consider is how long you're staying in Colombia, because if you're only staying a few weeks, it might be worth getting a travel SIM from a carrier in your home country. If you're staying in Colombia for say more than a month though, this might become a bit too expensive, in which case I would recommend obtaining a SIM card in Colombia. This will of course change your phone number, but you'll be getting data calls and texts for way, way cheaper than what you'd be getting with a travel sim. Uh, so in order to obtain a sim over there, you'll obviously need to visit a store of a mobile service provider, of which Colombia has several. Far and away, the best provider would have to be Claro, uh, although to be brutally honest, the bar's not particularly high. Still, I'd say uh, it's the, just the best by virtue of having the most amount of coverage and store locations across the country. So honestly, I just wouldn't bother with any of the others like Movistar. Uh, so getting a SIM card is pretty simple. I hardly even need to tell you, but all you do is take your passport, walk into any Claro store and ask them for it. Don't worry if they ask you for a cedula, this is basically a national ID card that every Colombian has, along with long-term foreigners, but you don't need this to get a SIM card, so just let the person know that you don't have this and show them your passport instead and you'll be good to go. After getting the card, you'll then want to go to buy a data package so you can use the internet and make calls, etc. And typically there uh, will be a separate counter or several counter booths where you can ask for that. Uh, you can also download the Mi Claro app and recharge from there whenever you need to. It goes without saying that data costs there are really cheap. Obviously, it differs from carrier to carrier, but you really won't be spending a lot under a prepaid plan, which is what I'd recommend, by the way, as you have to jump through a few more hoops that I won't go into if you want a postpaid plan. Uh, all right, so you've got the SIM, you've bought a data package, and up to this point, everything's been pretty straightforward, so you might wonder why I'm even bothering to make a video about this, but there is a reason, and that reason is the issue you'd run into if you didn't know about what I'm about to tell you. See, after 30 days of having your new Colombian SIM card, it'll stop working. As in, you suddenly won't have any data to use the internet, you won't be able to make calls or texts or do anything that requires a mobile network. Now you might assume that this is simply because your data package has expired or if you recharged recently, maybe you somehow quickly use it all up by accident, but neither is true. What's actually happened here is that your network usage has expired because as it turns out, you can only use it for 30 days unless you register your phone with Claro or whoever your carrier is before that month is over. Once those 30 days are up, you will be blocked from network access until you go in to register it. But what exactly do I mean by registering your phone? Well, basically some years ago, a law was introduced in Colombia that all phone handsets used in the country for more than 30 days need to be registered into a database. Now, every registration has some bits of information attributed to it. So I'll briefly go over the two main things. Firstly, the IMEI. This stands for International Mobile Equipment Identity and is essentially a number used to identify your phone that's unique to your individual handset. So you could think of this like the phone equivalent of a human fingerprint in that no other device will have the same IMEI number as yours. Another bit of information attributed to each registration in the database is a form of ID of the person who owns the phone. Uh, this could be a passport number or a cedular number, uh, which is that national ID card I was talking about earlier. The point is the phone is linked to an individual person in the database. So why is this a law? Well, this is basically to prevent phone theft, as if you were robbed and were to report the registered phone as stolen, the phone carrier now has the power to block the phone from being used as they have the IMEI number and your authorization to do this. And so all of this is to disincentivize thieves from stealing phones to begin with, knowing that the phone will be blocked once reported. Unfortunately, it's not a totally foolproof solution as the thief uh, can still pull the phone apart and sell individual parts of it like the screen or the chassis or any internal parts that can't be blocked, but I digress. All right, so you need to register your phone with a Colombian phone carrier. Now, how exactly do you do that? Well, there are three things you'll need, two of which I've just mentioned. First of all, the IMEI number of your phone. You can find this pretty easily just by dialing asterisk hashtag 06 hashtag on your phone and voila. 
The second thing, once again, is your ID, which can either be a passport or a Colombia National ID card, aka a cedula. Now, there's a very important tidbit of info I need to disclaim here, and that is that if you don't register your phone within 30 days and it becomes blocked from network usage, you will no longer have the option of registering it using your passport. At this point, you will need the aforementioned Colombian ID card. Now, as I briefly mentioned, there is a version of Colombian ID for foreigners that you can use to register with your phone, but you can only obtain this ID if you are in the country for longer than six consecutive months. And if you watch my video about everything you need to legally enter Colombia, you'll know that you're not allowed to stay in the country for any more than 90 consecutive days at a time if you're there under the tourist permit and don't have a visa. And chances are, if you're watching this video, you're probably new to Colombia and would fall into this category. All right, so I made a slight boo-boo. Basically, in order to get a national ID slash cedula, you actually need a visa, and a tourist permit is not a visa, which means that there is no way to get a cedula uh, with a tourist permit. <laughs> I should also mention uh, that there is actually a way of staying for 180 consecutive days in the country under a tourist permit. Basically, you just apply for this online. There's like a form you fill out, and once approved, then you can stay in the country for up to 180 consecutive days, which means that you don't have to leave the country after 90 days and re-enter. But again, this won't permit you uh, a cedula slash national ID. To get that, you still actually will need a visa. Uh, so point still stands, there's no way to get a cedula slash national ID with a tourist permit. Okay, back to the video. You can't get a foreign ID card, which means you have nothing to register with your phone after 30 days, which means you're locked out of the mobile network, right? Well, there is actually a solution here, and no, it's not just buying a new SIM card. Unfortunately, that won't do anything. The solution basically depends on you having a Colombian friend who's willing to help you, or just generally a friend who has any kind of Colombian ID card, whether it's citizen ID or foreign ID. So you can probably see where I'm going with this, but yes, with their permission, you can actually use another person's national ID number uh, to register your phone. You just want to make sure that this person comes with you to the store to do this, as they'll need to be there to authorize this registration. So all of that is to say, register your device before 30 days so you can use your passport and save yourself a headache. All right, so you've registered whatever ID you needed, you've registered your phone's IMEI number, but there is one last thing you'll need to complete this registration, and that is a receipt of your phone's purchase, or at the very least, some kind of confirmation of the purchase, but no guarantee the letter will work out for you. This could be digital or physical, it really doesn't matter as long as they can confirm the device's purchase. Once you have all of these things, just take them all into the Claro store or the store of whichever phone carrier you've gone with and tell them you want to register it and that's it. Once you've done that, your device is registered and you're good to go. Or at least you should be for about 95% of you. That's right, my friends, the bureaucracy never ends. See, if you happen to be one of the few people who has a relatively obscure brand of phone, there is a chance that even after going through this whole ordeal, that you might not be able to register it without jumping through some more hoops. Uh, the issue lies in the fact that when you register your phone, it becomes attributed to a brand and model that already exists within the database. For instance, the iPhone 12 Pro or Samsung Galaxy S22 Ultra. But what if you have a phone that isn't already listed in the database? Well, in that scenario, you would have to go about applying for it to be added, which is a process one step to try for me to go over this far into the video. So instead, I'll link an article in the description that tells you how to do that. What I will say though, is that you can actually see if your device's model is listed in the database by checking this other website I've also linked in the description. Uh, you just select your device's brand and then you'll have to click onto each device code to see the model. Uh, you might hear some people say that if your phone isn't sold in Colombia that it's unlikely to be in the database, but that's not necessarily true as I found even my phone, which is the relatively new Google Pixel 7 Pro, is listed here despite uh, the Pixel having no brand presence in Colombia. So if your device is listed here, then you'll be good to go with registering your handset, but if not, you're going to need that other article, I'm afraid. Okay, so that was a lot, but I thought it was necessary to describe the whole process as it's not information that's very well communicated to foreigners, I don't think. Uh, I know Claro at least does send you texts reminding you that you need to do this, but personally, I miss these texts as they are also absolutely relentless with their marketing messages, and because of that, I kind of stopped bothering to read any of them and miss this essential information as it just got bogged down amidst all the spam. Uh, also, the person at the Claro store didn't tell me that I would need to do this when I initially got my SIM, so it's definitely some important info you could easily miss, but that's why I make these videos, as I know what it's like when you're figuring all this stuff out for yourself for the first time, and you just want some guidance, but you're constantly being let down by the poor customer service, so hopefully this video will at least make this one thing a little less painful for you. I know it was a lot of info though, so I've put it all in an easy to follow checklist form in the description so you can see it all at a glance. And if you want more info like this along with stuff that's less bureaucratic, 
uh, feel free to subscribe and bell as I have a lot more about Colombia to share with you. But until then, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Ciao.